In this one, we've got a light on a glass cylinder of radius r, and they draw it for you and say, find the angle alpha. It's a little weird they ask you for a number for alpha in degrees when you weren't given any numbers, but you'll see the reason is this r and this r are going to cancel. The height of the ray above uh, the optical axis through the center is r over 2. So you'll see how it cancels. When you look at a problem like this, one thing to remember, two tips. One is that we may draw all kinds of fancy diagrams of lenses of different shapes, but all rays obey Snell's law. That's really what this whole section on optics is. It's just light obeying Snell's law, except we find ways to make lenses and um, thin lens equations out of it. So really, the difficulty in this problem is finding uh, the angles. So it's really geometry. So you really start by use a geometry to find theta incident. So let's look at theta incident. I like to draw it again. So we're going to say find theta i. But you can kind of tell um, you need to uh, get the normal. The definition of the incident angle is the angle between the ray and the normal to the surface. The normal to the surface looks like that. So what you need to see is that you would draw the normal to the surface by coming from the center of the cylinder. Right? So that's just geometry that you need to be able to see. Right? So there's your normal. Therefore, there is theta i. Okay, that's great. But now we have to find it. So there's really not much we can do here triangle-wise, but we know this angle equals this angle by our geometry, right? Two parallel lines with a ray going or a line going through them, those angles are the same. So if those angles are the same, we've got to find it here, which is a little easier because let's see, what do we know about this triangle? If we drop a line right there, there's a right triangle. And on that right triangle, we know this, the hypotenuse is r, and we know this part of it is r over 2. So there's a right triangle we can deal with that contains the angle we're looking for. So we have the opposite and the hypotenuse, so sine of theta i is r over 2 over r. Uh, there goes the r, 1 half. So inverse sine of 1 half, 30 degrees. So the theta incident is 30 degrees. All right, we're getting there. Step two, I would say, is to find theta t, the transmitted angle into the glass. Because, let's see, this diagram is getting busy, but maybe you can see the light comes in. And remember, the light falls towards the normal when it enters a, a medium of higher density. Okay, so this is a equals 1, a equals 1.5. So it came in at theta i to the normal, then it's going to fall to a smaller angle to the normal, theta t. We get that from Snell's law. So n1 is just air, right? So we could say 1 times the sine of the incident angle, 30 degrees, equals n inside, 1.5, times the sine of theta t. So uh, sine theta t equals a half. We know that's going to be a half. Divided by 1.5 is 0.333. It's basically a third. So you solve that and you get that theta t is 19 and a half degrees. But you're not done because that is not equal to alpha. We weren't asked for the transmitted angle. We were asked for this alpha, whatever that is. That angle is important when you're actually doing optics. That's why they asked about it. Um, so we've got to look at that and figure out what that is relative to what we know. Well, then again, geometry, you see we know, we know theta t now, we want alpha, but what helps us is we know the sum of those two. Since this line and this line cross, theta i equals the sum. Theta i equals this angle, which is equal to alpha plus theta t. Okay? So theta i, which we know, equals alpha plus theta which we know, 30 degrees, 19.5 uh, degrees, and in the end you get alpha equals 10.5 degrees.
Which is the right answer.